Greetings, friends. So I watched this video by Black Pigeon Speaks on his alternate channel, Felix Rex, in which he goes into the philosophy that consciousness is supreme, that the universe exists inside us, and not the other way around, that we exist within the universe. So he didn't explicitly say we live in the matrix, but this is something a lot of people talk about these days. We live in a matrix, man. We live in a big simulation. And I agree with half of his video, but then once we get into the second half of the video, that's when he really makes consciousness supreme. I, in many ways, can sympathize with Black Pigeon Speaks or, or Felix Rex. He's Canadian. He's traveled a lot. He seems to have spent like half of his life or more like out of Canada living in Asia, live, you know, various other countries around the world. You know, smart guy, but did he really think about it that much? Having followed this guy for a while, he's a reliably a nationalist, sympathizing, you know, conservative values kind of sympathizing guy, but, but then he does have these other interesting ideas. I mean, he, he's called himself an ag agnostic, which I guess is sometimes appropriate. So if you're an agnostic, that's pretty close to being an atheist anyways. It's like, it's just one step away from saying, I don't believe in a God, saying, I don't know. Well, you don't know, and then therefore, I mean, if you don't know, then you, you probably don't believe in a God, because God is not just a rational thing we arrive at. That's part of it. But anyways, uh, so the problem with the video is, of course, this new age direction, which I sympathize even if, I mean, if you watched my earlier videos, I was into the new age thing still for many years. I talked about the quantum physics, double slit experiment, uh, we can create our own reality, mind over matter, influenced by the East. And in the first part of his video, he's talking about how he lived in India, which I also did. And he got sick in India, so sick he almost died. I also got sick in India, but not that sick. I had a few colds. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously it's a dirty place. And, but then he seems to have been influenced by reading, I don't know, but Eckhart Tolle or Ram Das, who died recently, but the book uh, Be Here Now. The same sort of New Age philosophy that uh, you are exist in the moment, in the moment, man. And, and even in Felix Rex, the video, he's playing clips of hippies and New Age stuff. Um, Indian temples and well, I mean talking about his, his story there But you know later on he's playing the footage from the counterculture of the 60s And I'm starting to think what's going on here black pigeon speaks Are you mocking these hippies because you seem to agree with their I'm not saying the hippies had one unified worldview But you know generally speaking he's agreeing with that. It's all about your consciousness, man Alan Watts and all that. All, I mean, I've, I've liked these people too. I uh, uh, Terrence McKenna, but then you listen to these sorts of people for a while, then you start to, maybe not everyone, but then I start to realize like, wow, these guys, they're actually just atheists. And they're kind of, some of them have a degenerate character. It's true, Alan Watts, like drank, from what I understand, was a raging alcoholic. And he like, he died in his sleep, like before he reached the age of 60, I believe. Terrence McKenna also died relatively young, but I, I mean, I can't judge everyone for why they die. I mean, when it's your time to go, it's your time to go. But, but uh, you, you talked a lot about the drug use thing, and I, I've, even, I've liked some of Alan Watts' books. I'm not so I'm not disagreeing with everything. But these this philosophy goes to a certain level, but the problem is it's relativistic. It's just floating because there's no God, so then there's no ultimate source of truth. Black Pigeon speaks. He starts out his segment with clips of the universe. Like the galaxies, and he's playing spacey music too. The spacey ambient music. You're traveling through the universe, your consciousness is traveling. And then there's, he's playing these clips, which are obviously like an animation based on photographs. It's not like we have a real footage that we can show you of the, of the edge of the Milky Way galaxy or whatever. But Now the point I was trying to make about him showing space and the universe is that that's all they have. Wow, a great, vast space, mostly empty, filled with dust and burning balls of gas and very cold rocks. This is the best you can do? This is your highest of highs? This? Obviously, that inspires meaninglessness. It also is terrifying. Why would you get out of bed believing that? 
this is the supreme thing. The universe, you can show as many Milky Way galaxies as you want. I mean, it could, it's, it could very well be real. That's fine. Okay, we can never get there. And if you start thinking about your consciousness, you know, astral traveling, their astral traveling is a weird thing too. You know what? A lot of people who do it, apparently, they get haunted later on. On the one hand, they're using consciousness because it escapes the material world. But then they're also tied to materiality because consciousness just creates real these these realities which are ex expressed to us as like light and 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 planets and galaxies and it's like well that's just more material stuff so you're trying to escape that materiality with consciousness but in the end all you can do is create more material things you don't you didn't go to your source your source is beyond all that the universe is what Consciousness creates for itself as an environment for experience. Life is what consciousness creates for itself as a means to that experience. He says consciousness does not arise from the physical world. Consciousness is related to your brain, but it does not arise from your brain. It is not made by gray matter. And I agree. And that's... That, that was like a step up in your thinking. It's like, yes, there is, but what they call, con they call consciousness, they don't call it a soul. He does not use the word soul. It's similar to making God this sort of simplistic force, like it is a force. You're avoiding looking at it as a being to which you have a duty. If there is actually a being, albeit in the Trinity sense, where where there's Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but but nonetheless, there is still a being there, then you have a personal responsibility to consider this being as a person, maybe not a human, but as the supreme being. So there's none of that. It's a depersonalizing sort of takes out the, the life force of God when you just call it consciousness. Now, he says he's going to make a video about what happens when we die. So it'll be interesting to see what he takes in that posi in that video. Will he take the Gnostic view that you can progress and maybe you'll be, fl who knows, but, you know, you can progress and maybe reincarnate or become like the Buddha, leave this plane, ascend to a higher plane. So I don't know if he's going to go quite that far, but I would be very surprised if he starts talking about heaven and hell. That I would be very surprised. So again, stop believing all this, this matrix simulation nonsense. Most people who message me talking about this, we're in a simulation, we're in a, we're in a matrix. They don't, see, they don't seem to write in a stable way. They don't seem like well-balanced people. That's just what I can infer. I, can't, I don't know these people, but you need an absolute foundation. So I know I talk about God a lot, and not everyone is a fan of me always talking about God. That's just one of the things I come back to because in an intellectual philosophical sense, having that one creator figure explains so much in terms of absolute values. If there is a good or a bad, a right or a wrong, a true or a false. We're not all going to reach the conclusion that I could die, so it, it's okay. It's all consciousness. My consciousness will continue. Yeah, it will. But is that sufficient? No. When you died, the most important things would be, well, what good or bad did I do? What was the significance of my life? What did my life mean? Not just for me, not for experience. Who w was I loyal to? When he talks about consciousness creating life to have experience, that's essentially meaningless and rootless. That's a recipe for a chaotic world, a hedonistic world. The sort of world we're already finding ourselves in. Hasta luego, amigos.